Hi, this is Hansi from Line Guardian. A big hello to our fans to Metal from Finland. Uh, it's great to be back here in Helsinki and we will have a hell of a show this evening. It's always great to be back. I mean, there's no doubt, but especially um, with the Tuska Festival, we have made great experience. Even though it's quite unusual for us to play during daytime or daylight, but um, since this is Finland and it's July, it doesn't make a bit di big difference anyway, because you know the sun hardly goes down at all. So um, we really enjoyed the time here, and we arrived yesterday, so we had some time to check out Helsinki and the clubs, and you know. The scenery it was very nice. So you have been having a, high, a nice time since we Yeah, and I will today and uh, we'll uh, depart tomorrow around afternoon, you know, so we still have like five or six hours and we use them. Okay. And speaking about daylight and playing in, in festivals, uh, would you tell that you prefer to, to play in small, uh, not smaller crowds, but indoor venues. Yeah, it's more intimate. Um, usually it's uh, the, the, the better situation for a band, especially if you play headline shows and then it doesn't matter if it's a big venue or a you know, tiny club, as long as it is packed and you know the intensity of the people um, gets transferred immediately to the band and you draw a lot of energy out of it. Of course, if you play like five, six in a row, then it's something different, then it becomes a uh, toil. But uh, up to that point, it's it's more preferable than uh, a regular festival. There are exceptions like uh, Wacken, for example. If you play in front of 70,000, 80,000 people, then this still is something very special. Or if you have a, a night show in Spain, you know, in front of 50,000 people, that's as good as a great club show is. It's, it's really great, especially here in Finland. I think um, there, there is the right spirit and it's a, a hot-blooded spirit. Um, you would not necessarily expect it so far in the north. Um, but um, at points it comes close to the excitement and the, um, the hot-blooded energy you have in South, Southern Europe, for example. So Finland, um, in terms of you know, having a intense audience they are on a really high ranking I think you know all the shows they have a um, something attractive and um, all countries are slightly different and so um, the be behaviors are during the concert but um, I, I consider Finland to be a real rock and roll place so that's very amazing and very enjoyable well um, what am I supposed to say? Of course, it is the best power metal, heavy metal album of the year. Um, I would not disagree. Um, we have put a lot of effort and work in it. And I think um, people realized it. So um, a lot of people consider it to be among the best album of the year 2010. Um, for me, it um, delivers all the qualities of Blind Guardian, which we have gained over the years. So it is a very personal Blind Guardian album and um, it unites the qualities of an album like A Night at the Opera and Battalion Sophia at the same time and it does have sort of perspectives for the future. Um, one big uh, occasion of course are the orchestral elements in there which we haven't used in this massive way before but um, they give you a hint how the orchestral album could sound like. Story-wise, well, it's um, a, an album pretty much based on fantasy, apart from you know some cases like Curse My Name, for example, which is very actual and almost highly political, um, but um, more inspired by John Milton's writing than by something really new. Uh, but you know the uh, times change, but the uh, occasions are always the same, the cases are always the same. So mankind does not really change and uh, you can figure that in this song. At the Edge of Time in general is a, a very um, concept-like album. If you listen to the songs, you know, um, they, they seem to be connected. Each song which 
yeah, with each other, even though they are not mostly at least. Um, we nonetheless try to bind that conceptual aspect in due to the album cover, you know, where everything gets together because uh, the pyramid is uh, supposed to be a sort of interacting place in between all the times and all the stories which are on this album. Um, it went naturally, but on the other hand, um, I my idea of music and being a performer and a vocalist was always to be individual. So um, I never really took too much inspiration from any of the vocalists I admire. You know, of course there are some uh, parts which you know are highly influenced by Mercury or others by Gillen. But all in all, I try to. Uh, deliver it in my own direction, I, and I never really cared too much what was the, uh, the 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 trend of the moment. And you know, I just developed on what I did. And uh, with Charlie Bauerfeind as a producer, I found um, a, a person who features this even more. You know, and um, he um, carefully pays attention that I keep my own identity and. Uh, uh, deliver certain trademarks which I sometimes you know think well am I supposed to do this in this direction or this direction and um, sometimes you want to go a little too far into a different direction and Charlie is a person who really you know is picky and very careful you know he really says well you can do it in a more singable way but you have to have uh, the, the rasp in for example or you have to put all energy in and you know don't do it too economically or too artist-wise or, you know, skillful. And um, that's, you know, that, that, that all has an impact on what happens on an album. It's different when we play live, especially um, when we're in a touring situation. The way I um, compose an album is very demanding on the vocal cords and, you know, physically. Uh, so um, I have to find my way across somehow during shows sometimes. It's easier when it's a one-off show like here today and especially if it's just 60 minutes. But if you're on the road for let's say 25 to 30 shows then well you have to be very careful. You have to find a little way to spare your Yeah, it, exactly. And the, uh, the, the raspy high pitch things which are all chest sung. You know, I'm, I'm not faking but... Um, we can hear that. Yeah, but I, you know, but I, I saw that um, in some discussions when people, you know, try to figure what I'm doing. But but usually it's all done by chest, you know. And <clears throat> this in a live situation, I can do that one, two, three days maybe, and then it's gone. And then you know, you cannot control it. Like a, a classical opera vocalist wouldn't even sing three days in a row. It's impossible, you know. Some musical artists have to do it, but they are wasted after five years or six years. But you have been done that perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. No, not at all. I mean, it's uh, sometimes even scary because we um, hardly disagree. You know, when um, we did At the Edge of Time, for example, I was, you know, creating points, you know, during the production just to get the, the major points done. And I have had some minor points which I said, well, I, ha I can give in there. So, you know, sort of political <laughs> decisions and, and thinking. And uh, when we had the discussions, it never was a problem. So even the things which were of minor importance for me, they all got through because um, um, nowadays we rely on each other very much and uh, there hardly is any tougher discussion. Of course, there's a discussion about sound, blah, blah, blah. And not everything is always nice, but um, I would say um, we have a very good chemistry and um, this pays back on, on the road where you know there is no sort of rush, there's no aggression, there's no anxiety amongst ego us. Trips. No, no ego trips, nothing. So we're just on the road and uh, we take our times together and we split and that's fine. And especially when we're at home, you know, we all have our private lives and uh, no one affects or interacts too much into the private life of the other person. We meet from time to time and we spend so much time in terms of music anyway, you know, even when we're at home. So um, it, it would be very painful to do it in a different way, I would suppose. Yes, I have to say that there are so many bands that fall apart because of 
because of ego trips, like I want my stuff on the album because it's better than yours. And yeah, it's, uh, that's very easy in Blind Guardian, you know, since um, Markus and Frederick S. Thoman uh, did as well, barely ever come up with a song. There's not much discussion, but um, you know there are parts where they can uh, involve themselves anyway, and they possibly could come up with a song. And yes, then there is a discussion, but um, usually there are like four or five people which we trust, and you know the the rating of the individual songs is not too different. Usually, you know everyone agrees on which song is the best and which one would be the weakest, and in case there is not enough space on an album, then of course the weakest one will be skipped. But uh, you know we are very democratic. Nah, democratic. I won't say very economic. Econ uh, economical. <laughs> Difficult word. <huh? laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, we just write as much as we need, and um, we do not spend our time on bullshit. So if we feel something goes the wrong direction, we usually stop immediately and do not even care about these pieces. Mm -hmm.